All right, so I'm going to make a recording of 10 to 15 minutes uh, where I just explained to you about the paper. And I will extend the deadline to um, the 27th of September. There was not a post due this weekend, but if you do the post this weekend, you can of course cut out the post next weekend. Um, the, there are 10 posts due and there are more weeks than that. I think there are 13 weeks. Um, so I think given that I, you don't have to do the post when a paper is due. It comes out that you have to do them all when there isn't a paper due, but um, that's up to you. You can do a post and a paper the same week because usually they're on a significant different topic. And then you can, you've already done all the work, just preparing for the class, you've already got what were your reactions before? So you've got at least a third of it done. But that's your discretion. And as long as you get 10 of them in by the end of the semester, if you want to post an extra one, I think I have a place for extra credit, but you can alert me to that and I can put um, an assignment post there for extra credit. All right, so this is the paper that's coming due. Um, let me share my screen and show you what the requirements were. This was taken from the syllabus. Uh, the paper's due September 24th. So I can change that. I can edit that to the 27th. Um, again, the 27th for me is different than the 27th for you, but <laughs> whatever. I've only had one student, no, oh, two students come in for conferences. And um, it was, it was very helpful when a student did come in. I think she came in saying she was really confused. And then I asked her, well, what did you want to say? And then I speculated about it. And she said, well, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> so I do think that, especially with the first paper, if you haven't had me as a teacher, you might be uh, afraid, but the, the solution to that is just to come into a conference. But I'm not going to require it because you should show initiative, whether, you know, how important this is to you or whatever. And then some of you just have too many obstacles and your electricity breaks down or you have to. Uh, balance the amount of electricity used in a conference versus in your other classes. So I don't want to put students like that up against a wall, you know, make life more difficult for them. And that's why I'm not requiring it, but I'm definitely recommending it. A thousand words is not very much. It is not a research paper. You just take quotes from um, the class readings. If you um, if you take from outside, which you can, it's just you have to make sure that you show me you read the material for the class. So sometimes a student comes up with some wonderful thesis and readings, but there's no evidence from their paper that they've read the class material. So that's my number one requirement. If you want, like I did on uh, Plato's dialogues, I had a lot of newspaper articles connected to them. 
So if, for example, you have a news article about how people are disagreeing with the will of the gods, of God or what's religious in your country, just like they were in Greece and just like they are in America, you want to use that newspaper article? That would be great. You just have to cite it in some kind of standard form for a newspaper article. Um, so let me go to the paper rubric. I, again, this I think is pretty generic. In my other class, we are doing some social science-based uh, rubrics, but in this one, it's just humanities, which is, it's coming out of your head. <laughs> it's not a research paper, it's an idea, right? You have an idea. And I will grade it based on whether it's clear, whether it's worthwhile, whether it shows that you understand the material and you can analyze it, synthesize it, and um, it's valuable. So there's Bloom's taxonomy, right? I don't want a thesis. Here is an example of a more complex and a less complex thesis. If you have your thesis, Euthyphro and Socrates disagreed about the will of the gods. Well, yeah, <laughs> but that's not very complicated and it's not very hard to prove. It's just literally reading the text and saying Euthyphro says X, Socrates says Y. There you go, Professor Beck. Now, <laughs> uh, the next step would be. Euthyphro and Socrates disagree uh, in ways that show they apply religious texts to their lives differently. Euthyphro uses religion, understands religion as black and white principles that you apply, whereas Socrates has a much more poetic, nuanced, um, each situation requires a different choice in order to get at what's best sort of approach. And then you would, right? You would use your quotes. Euthyphro quotes from Homer directly, the gods, uh, Uranus, Kronos cut off Uranus genitals. It says it right in Hesiod and I'm not doing that. Socrates says, oh, you really believe those stories? That must be why I'm getting accused of impiety because I think the gods are good and I don't think that's good. <laughs> so if Socrates, you know, interprets it as this is what sons and fathers, the kind of power struggle that actual people get into. And so it's trying to teach you about don't get into a power struggle with your kids. So he reads it metaphorically. Um, so that's a higher level of a thesis statement. Then you could have um, application, right? The disagreements between Socrates and Euthyphro about how to understand religious texts and apply them to your life are also true in my society. And this paper will show that these are uh, very old patterns that human beings get into, the types of things human beings face in some respects haven't changed for 2,500 years, right? So then your thesis would be, you have to explain what Euthyphro said, what Socrates said, how you applied it. And then you give an example from your experience. Here's what one person says about what Islam requires of women. And here's another religious Islamic leader who thinks 
Mohammed was a very progressive feminist and uh, right. So they disagree along these same lines. They quote from the text, different texts differently. And just like it had this impact on Athens, it has an impact on my life and on um, the people around me. So there are more complex and less complex thesis statements. Now, then it's a question of how you prove them. Do you have reasonable arguments? Are they based on facts? Okay, the text actually says that. Or you can, uh, uncontroversial assumptions. So you can refer to certain uh, common knowledge if you want to, and what authorities in the field accept. So um, I think your authority in this paper for the most part, unless somebody wants to bring in something else, will be just Plato, right? Plato is the authority. And um, you draw an inference, right? So Euthyphro says this, Socrates says this, um, therefore they disagree. Socrates has a follow-up argument, and that makes sense to me because Euthyphro really hasn't shown that he knows that in this particular decision, uh, in this particular situation, all the gods would agree. So when I have that, the line of reasoning in the use of row, you show me in your paper that you really understand that line of reasoning or whether Socrates should have escaped or not, right? So you can write a whole, anyway, you have your argument and I'll go over the paper topics too and give examples of what sort of thesis and how it would be proven. Then you have your textual, textual references. Um, let's see, at least three, you can paraphrase or directly quote. Um, they reflect that you understand the material. They're long enough to explain why you use that quote in your argument, but they're not too long. You explain the connection clearly and you incorporate it into your paper. Um, then you cite Google Classroom, the date, the name of the attachment, and then the page. Now, if you quote from the same text more than once, um, you could say same as above, page so-and-so. Or you can abbreviate all those words because um, it gets kind of long. There, your citation, your examples. So you're going to use an example from your own experience that you're, you know, giving your own example. It's long enough to show the connection. Um, it's just, but it's, let's see. And you describe the connection clearly. You don't have too many examples or too few examples. And the example um, is not too long. Sometimes a paper is a three page paper, one whole page is describing an example, and that's not going to work. Uh, counter argument you make sure to consider what is the best disagreement against what I'm saying and you explain why your view is better. Each paragraph has a topic. It connects, you explain the connection to the previous paragraph and to the thesis. The parts of the paragraph fit together in a whole. So each paragraph is sort of, has this unity within it. And then each paragraph is linked to each other one and then they're all linked to the thesis. Um, the grammar works. And I, you, if your grammar, if your English is not that good, I can't give you an A. And the reason is because we have to graduate students from AUW and from Lyon, actually, who are um, good at writing. Otherwise, you will suffer professionally 
and the school's reputation will suffer. Um, and that'll come out right in a cover letter for a job or an application. And it is serious because I've, I have had AUW students that are very articulate in the spoken word. And then when they write, it's very surprising. Their writing skills are not as good. Then there's a huge range between students in their English. So I do recommend on, on some of the posts that the students need to do their posts, write the first draft early, set up an appointment with a tutor at the writing center and work with them. It just takes practice. The way you learn how to learn English is to practice. You have to read it, listen to it on the, the, your machine, right? You could listen to many different ways that people are speaking in English and then write, right? When I was in Indonesia, I had so many people wanting me to give a lecture on how to make their English better. <laughs> and I just get up there saying, okay, this is just like somebody who wants me to tell them how to lose weight, you know? You do it by doing it. <laughs> There's no silver bullet. How do you lose weight? Eat less, exercise more. Okay, <laughs> how do you learn English? Read, write, speak, and listen to English. Just do it and you'll get better. Um, I don't think there's any silver bullet. So that it is important that you do that. And I, I knock the grades down, not notoriously so. I'm not gonna flunk you even if an English professor would. Um, but every once in a while, I don't even know what the student is trying to say. I do try to rewrite it. This is where I recommend that you save a draft other than the one you post. If you send it in one kind of document, a Google Doc, I can do suggestions and then you can see your, your version and my version. If you send it in this other kind of doc, I have to change it to a Google doc. And then as far as I know, I, I can't figure out how to do just suggestions. So I end up rewriting it without the student necessarily remembering the first draft. So I would keep it if I were you. If you wanna study that, just study what I said, what you said, and have, you know, just learn from that. I do think that some English professors will say, oh, you have a dangling participle or you have a subject object uh, word doesn't, you know, numbers doesn't match or something. And that's valuable. That's not the way I do it. It's like with ethics, you can, you know, you can tell your kids or whatever, here's the rules, or you can describe virtue. But the best way for a kid to learn how to be virtuous is to have parents that are virtuous, right? They just show you. So I try to just show you by how I rewrite, you know, and then when you read it, hopefully mentally you'll understand, yeah, this is a lot clearer. Now, how do I do this for myself, right? That's what I try to do. Um, all right, so then just up to that point, technically, I could give you a B minus, or it's, it used to be a C, but um, then these other criteria are over and above. If your thesis is complex, if it's complete, if you really supported all aspects of it, and if it's creative. As I said, those more complex, less complex thesis statements, um, the more creative are when you apply it to your own life. Um, so 
does it matter? That's another thing. It, I don't, I can get papers where the student is very polished in their English skills. So they score high all the way up to this point. And then I say, but your thesis, nobody cares. It's a trivial thesis. And so I can't give you a point, right? A third of a grade higher for that. Then I have these criteria, which I think well, this is Lyon College um, mission statement, but I think it fits with AUW. Um, these are the character traits of a liberally educated person. Intellectual honesty, commitment to truth, fairness to opposing views, patience with complexity and ambiguity, tolerance of reasoned dissent, the counter argument. So, um, so I'll look for that in your papers. And then the other, the other point I'll look for is your, you have some idea of the good because your worldview, right? Your worldview that you're working out is basically your idea of the human good, <laughs> what we're supposed to be doing with our lives or what the background values or goal is. And then um, that should be united between reasoning and um, faith or some idea of flourishing. It doesn't have to be any kind of faith. It can be any kind of religious tradition or philosophical tradition, but you unite it with reasoning and argument and logic. That's what I insist on because when people split those, it's trouble, right? And especially women, <laughs> suffer a lot when uh, reason gets split off from emotion, um, okay, or from some idea of religion and what God wants. Women get, you know, mistreated quite a bit for that. Then when we get back to class, I will ask all of you to give a presentation um, I might be, I might wait till after even next week, till the week after that, but I would like you to be self-consciously aware it's a formal presentation and the criteria are pretty standard, right? You're organized, you have a good technique, uh, you, you present yourself well, and this can It'll be hard with the machine. It'll be hard when you can't turn on the video, but your tone of voice, your way of projecting that you, you have uh, knowledge of what you're talking about. You can, someone asks you any sort of content question and it has a central message. So it has a thesis, it's organized, you know what you're talking about, and then your delivery is good, and you can answer questions, right? That's, I think that's standard stuff. I don't think that should scare you very much. And then paper one topic. So let's just look at them and speculate a little bit. So the one person I have that came to the, um, came to the office hours. Well, there were two. This is one of them. She said she wanted to write about parent-child relationships. And so the outline she had said, my thesis is going to be um, comparing the family in Athens to my family. And then she had point one, this is the family in Athens. This is my family, point two or something. It was way too generic. Like, so I asked her, well, what, like, what are you comparing? What's the content? And um, so I just talked a little bit about, right? Crito tells Socrates, you have to raise your kid. Euthyphro um, takes his father to court for murder, um, is accused of, uh, he violates, he doesn't respect his parents, right? 
Crito says you don't respect your kids enough. Um, what does that tell us about Athens? So when I was talking to her, and I, I do think a number of you might be interested in this, um, I said, okay, in Athens, the citizens were given the opportunity to be very engaged in public life. They were encouraged. They were in some respect required, although the city couldn't force them. They could, they, when they got picked for jury duty, they had to get their derriere into town to do jury duty. And then when they got picked for the assembly, they had to get there. But there were all these other ways at the marketplace, symposia at home, religious festivals, where people were supposed to be engaged in political life. They were supposed to be finding out what's going on in the juries and the assemblies so that they are informed so that when they do finally take their turn, they know what's going on. <laughs> they know how to think about criminal uh, justice trials because they'd heard the stories from all the other people for a long time about what the case was, what decisions were made, whether people agreed or disagreed a year or two later, how did that turn out? Just anyway, the idea is that in Athens, you're supposed to learn how to be a citizen and the city depends on you to be informed. So, and that, that was our last reading from the last class. So I was talking to her and I said, okay, so Athens represents um, the way I teach it, um, society where citizens take turn ruling and being ruled. So supposedly the developing countries are trying to become more like Athens or America. <laughs> of course, America has let everybody down and the West. And of course, with post-colonialism, it's a lot more nuanced than that. But I think people in developing countries do want more and more people to participate in public life, to have access to education and jobs, especially women. But, um, but this uh, reading Plato reminds people that even in a society where there's citizen engagement, there's problems. The citizens can be corrupt. But the other problem is that whenever a parent decides to, to go public and to speak out against the government, just in order to keep them honest, in order to prevent corruption, in order for their children not to live through an unstable time or an authoritarian time. In other words, in order to make the society better for their own kids, they have to leave home and get engaged and their children might suffer. They might suffer because they're not home. They might suffer because people will tell them your dad is, a, is an atheist, your dad is an evil man, or they'll punish the kids, right? Well, lots of political dissidents uh, their enemies will go against their children and their families, and that usually shuts them up. Um, so, so that was what I was trying to get at. Is that what you're like? Is that what you had in mind? That was what was going on in Athens. And then I said, well, something like, okay, so here you are. A lot of AUW students are from conservative countries or from rural areas where the village, the area is very conservative and they think uh, Muslim Islam believes that women should not go to college and definitely should not go to a whole nother country to go to college. And so they'll condemn the student's parents, right? And so in this case, the parents, have made a public statement that they want their daughters to get educated. And if they're Muslim, they're going against 
perhaps the traditional religion. So they might be getting accused of being atheists <laughs> and corrupting the youth, or in her case, they accuse the youth of being corrupt. Like the women at AUW aren't studying, they're just partying, they're drinking. That's what she said the villagers in her town were saying. Well, so in this case, her parents have publicly made a statement through by sending their daughter to college that they disagree with the traditional view of religion. But in this case, they've taken a risk so that their daughter can have a better life. And Socrates is also taking a risk so that his children can have a better life. But in the short term, right, they lost their dad. Now, it could even happen to some AUW students that in the short term, especially when they were from Afghanistan, that the parents could, you know, really suffer, like not have a job or get imprisoned or something. And so the student would not be able to leave home and would be condemned. And, you know, it'd be real trouble. So I think, you know, there are a lot of similarities and differences. But as I talked to her about it, she said, yeah, that's what I had in mind, right? So that would be a great example. But the main thing is you don't have to answer all my questions. My questions are just sort of brainstorming. So don't obsess about my question. Just try to think of, okay, what sort of analogy do I see with my own situation and Socrates and his kids situation in terms of violating traditional notions of what it means to be pious, right? The God's religion. And also whether uh, the corrupting the youth, whether my parents are giving me too much freedom and I'm going to become corrupt or I already am corrupt. And so um, the village, people in the village would say you're corrupting the youth because you're letting her go to the school and be, you know, corrupt. <laughs> So anyway, that's one. That's just one. And I can't go through all of these. Um, again, they're just suggestions. They can run together. Like you might be working on number one and you end up bringing in things like number two. You might start out with number two and then end up saying something about your family. That's fine. Um, what the masses believe, right? So both uh, the Corrido and the Euthyphro discuss what the masses believe. So again, you could think of examples in your own countries. Um, what about a number of principles? So here's what the other, another student wrote about that Socrates has his principles, which is why he won't escape. And then Euthyphro has his principles, which is why he should take his father to court for murder. And so this student wanted to talk about, is this, you know, they, they're similar and different. They're, you know, plus, is it always right to stick to principles? Is that what virtue is? And why or why not? So this student contrasted this kind of legalistic approach to Buddhism, because Buddhism, it's totally right. It doesn't have these rigid principles and there's no final judgment. It's a Buddhist is supposed to make decisions that'll maximize positive karma, right? And make sure not to pick fights, you know, and try to get along and all that. So, so that was fine. And that's what I like because I can learn so much from my students. But I suppose number one is that you learn about yourself, right? Maybe it had never occurred to you that your ethical formation was more based on principles or it wasn't based on principles. It was based on karma, right? A lot of you 
just grow up with these habits and you don't know anybody else um, thought differently. And that's AUW is a great place for getting people together. And Lion is also a great place for getting people together who didn't ever know anybody who thought the way their roommate thinks, you know? And that's the point is that you have to start rethinking, re-examining. Doesn't mean you throw it all out. It just means you no longer, something is not true because your mommy told you, okay? <laughs> or your daddy. You have to give rational arguments. You have to go from living by habit and imitation and obedience to living by reason giving your own reasons. Um, the courts and the legal system. Um, so the, the issue here wasn't the way the system was set up. It was the people who were running the system. And does that happen in your country, right? Um, and I've already had students write about that, right? Indonesia appears to be democratic, but if you speak out, you disappear, <laughs> I think. One of the students said that, or Cambodia. Yeah, if you want to talk about that, um, that the rich get away with everything. It appears to be the rule of law, but nobody in the elite class expects to ever have to abide by it. Um, do you think Euthyphro was holy, do you think, Socrates? So that's just examining what do you think it means to be a religious person, holy person. Um, compare any of them to a public figure in your societies. Um, why it's similar, why it's different. Uh, discuss a person you know who exhibits Aristotle's character traits. You could write a long essay on that. Um, Socrates show that Socrates has the character traits uh, that Aristotle lists. Know thyself, that's one of Aristotle's biggies. Um, connects, oh, of course, we didn't do Jesus in this class, so you can't go there. And here's the Newland. Um, so you can write papers about Newland. You can write, here's another one about Newland, the Biological Foundation. Then you have McCullough. Uh, our brains are wired for revenge and forgiveness. And you can definitely also do the depression or the stress um, articles, especially since I'm giving you an extension. Usually I don't, and then there isn't really enough time from the last, from the last lecture on that until the papers are due. But if you would like to write on depression or stress, and I think, I think and any of you would, would like to, and I know that a number of the um, Lion students have thought a lot about these issues, right? The science behind stress and depression, the, chemi the brain chemistry, the body chemistry. So I really encourage you to do that. If I mean, you've already thought a lot about it, and if at all you would like to run the thesis by me, right? Come to the office hours before you actually try to write the paper up, um, but it's not required. And I would say, send me an email if, if you're at Lion or if you're up all night, um, you can send me an email and I will turn on my um, Zoom link. And I think all of you have the meeting number and the passcode number. And if you don't, um, okay, the meeting ID is 553-368-0111. And the passcode is the number five, capital T, small r, capital A, small r, small g. Now, I did have a student also tell me that I talk too fast and I should watch that. And if during class, if you wanna raise your hand or if you wanna put in the chat, slow down. 
that's fine. Um, she said that she can catch it when she goes back and looks at the YouTube video, but I don't want you to have to do that. If you come to class, you shouldn't have to see the class twice. You don't have time for that. Um, I have another student that said that the lion students talk too fast. So everybody should try to slow down a little and sort of articulate because it is, we have this uh, language and then also the quality of the internet. But I think it's worth it, right, to hear other people's stories. I hope you do. I am totally fascinated by things, but I'm also amazed at how many things, how many of these patterns and questions are so similar. <laughs> but there's the, the similarities are amazing and the differences are amazing. That's just, that's me. <laughs> that's why I have this job. Um, and I wouldn't give it up. But um, other students, I mean, given that I think that is valuable, there are other things you have to do. You know, talk slower, uh, make sure in your groups that you, everyone gets to speak and no one is intimidated. All right, now we have this, yeah, okay. I think I've said what I need to say and I've taken too much time. So um, I wish you well. I will have office hours at 8.30 to 10 uh, in the morning for the next day, Bangladesh, and the next day, Bangladesh time. And for Lion, it's tomorrow at 9.30 to 11 at night and the next day. Thursday and Friday. Then I start having class again. So, okay, um, that's it. Let's see. Come on, there we go.